I literally just can't right now. So it's just not a good equation. <laughs> I am fading so fast. I really just want to stay in bed and watch TikTok. Hey y'all, my name is Merit. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a, another 24 hour readathon vlog. I am actually at home right now, so that's why there's a change of scenery. I'm actually standing in front of my bookshelf and I was just thinking to myself, wow, Meredith, you have no content planned out for the next two weeks, so I need to get to filming. And also, I really just want to stay in bed and read all day and what a perfect time because I have no plans because I have no life. So that is what we're going to be doing in the next 24 hours. We're going to be trying to read as much as possible. If you guys are interested, I actually did do another 24 hour readathon vlog which i will link in the cards as well as in the description if you want to go check that out after this one my first plan is to finish the last olympian which is the last book in the percy jackson series i have like a hundred ish pages left from finishing the book so this is my first priority i'm probably not going to give you guys too many thoughts on it just because it is the last in the series you don't want spoilers but i really do adore this series it's a middle grade fantasy story following a young boy named percy jackson and he finds out that he's half human half god and i'm currently reading this for the percy jackson read along then the book that i want to read it's actually why I wanted to do this 24 hour readathon vlog because I want to make sure that I get this read soon because it's just staring at me and that is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong and oh my gosh first of all look at this cover it is absolutely beautiful I cannot wait to read this and I also just think that the premise sounds so interesting there's been a lot of hype surrounding it lately this book follows a I believe it's like a 1920s Shanghai retelling of Romeo and Juliet. And to be honest, that's all I really need to know about this because that sounds amazing. Then I'm hoping to get to Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman. This is the second book in the Ark of a Scythe trilogy. And I actually read Scythe in the previous 24 hour readathon vlog that I did. Again, if you want to go check that out. But if you don't know what the Scythe series is about, it follows this society where death has been eradicated. And so people don't die of natural causes. And the only way people can die is by Scythes. It's really interesting. And I think it has a lot of really great discussion but it's also super entertaining and I just can't stop thinking about the first book so I definitely want to pick up Thunderhead really really soon. And the last book on my potential TBR for this readathon is actually going to be City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare. I just reread City of Bones and this book keeps staring at me but I'm supposed to be buddy reading it so I'm kind of hoping to hold off on it but also I just really really want to read this. I really want to finish the series. I loved being back with these characters and I can't wait to dive back into the world. If you don't know what the first book is about, City of Bones, because you somehow live under a rock, it follows a girl named Clary whose mother is taken and she enters the world of the Shadow Hunters, which are demon killers. And it's just so much fun. I read these when I was in middle school and I love being back in the world. I always love rereading them. I haven't reread like the whole series probably ever. So that is my goal for the next year is to read every single Shadow Hunters book and it's gonna be hard, but it's also gonna be a lot of fun. So I can't wait to dive into City of Ashes. So I also might pick up Brit Marie Was Here by Frederick Bachman. This is the last novel by him that I have not read. I want to read this realistically by the end of 2021, or 2020, oh my gosh, I skipped ahead of year. I do really want to get to this soon, but also I'm just not in the mood for like a literary contemporary book. I am very much in a fantasy headspace, as you probably saw by all the books that I just pulled out from my TBR. So I don't know if I'm going to be getting to this one specifically, but it does sound good and I do want to read it. So maybe I'll pick this up if I have an itching for it. So that is my TBR for this vlog. I will update you guys when I have more to say about any of these books. I'm gonna go make a dive in on The Last Olympian and then I'll check in with you guys and just a little bit. So I literally just recorded this intro and I'm an idiot because I forgot that I'm supposed to be reading Curse of Dark and Lonely for the Disney Channel Games Sort of Fun. So um, I'm gonna be reading that as well. <laughs> Hopefully, at least part of it. I need to start it. So I might do that actually after The Last Olympian. So just stay tuned is all I need to say. Stay tuned. A Curse of Dark and Lonely is a Beauty and the Beast fantasy retelling. That's all I know about it. That's all I want to know about it. So I'll tell you guys what it's actually about when I actually read it. So it's now 2 p.m. I started this readathon at 1 p.m. and I've actually finished my first book for this readathon. I finished The Last Olympian by Rick Roy Orden. I almost said by Percy Jackson, that is just incorrect. I started off on page 255 and it ends on page 381. So I read like 120 something pages so far and it's only been one hour. So I am feeling pretty dang good about this readathon. I ended up giving this five stars. I thought I was gonna give it four stars, but I finished it and it made me happy. It made me wanna cry. It made me excited to read the next series. And I just genuinely couldn't think of a reason to not give this five stars beyond the fact that it's not my favorite in the series, but I still did really enjoy it. It was definitely probably the most action packed out of any of them. I 
I think maybe the reason why I don't want to give it five stars is just because I feel like things were kind of tied up too quickly in the end and I just kind of wanted more from a character relationship standpoint so I was a little bit disappointed in that but I also know that there's a lot of other books in this universe and that I can get those if I read those so that's why I just gave it five stars. I really enjoyed my time reading it. I wouldn't probably change anything and I love being with these characters. Now I'm going to move on to my second book for this readathon and I'm thinking I want to read these Violent Delights but I need to read A Curse to Dark and Lonely so I'm going to contemplate it for like five minutes. I'm going to try and start A Curse of Dark and Lonely I think because I actually do have to read that one for the Disney Channel Games readathon but my heart is telling me to read this. So will I actually read A Curse So Dark and Lonely? Probably not, but I am going to try it with good intentions. So I am going to go read that now and I'll update you guys when I made some progress in my next book. Hi friends. So it is now 4 p.m. which means it's the third hour of the 24 hour readathon and I'm kind of thinking I don't want to sleep or at least I want to stay up as late as possible to get as much reading done as possible because I really want to test myself and it's probably a terrible idea, but we're all for challenges on this channel. We are all for trying new things and testing our limits. So I might be sleep deprived in the next few clips that you see, but it's fine. We're going to roll with it. I wanted to update you guys because I am not on my second book. I did end up picking up A Curse So Dark and Lonely and I am about 43% through and I just don't care for it. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling that is very much so a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I don't really feel like it's doing that much original things to it. Like, I don't know, it is original because there's a lot of different representation. Like the main character has cerebral palsy, which is really cool and something that I haven't seen before in a Y fantasy setting. But that's like the only thing I feel like it's really changing about the story. Like it very much reads like you're at the Beast Castle and then Belle comes in and it's it's very, very similar to the original story. Apparently it's kind of an urban fantasy, but I'm really confused because I don't really see the fragments of the real world in this book. Like the main character who plays like Belle in this story, Harper, she has a cell phone, which is pretty much the only thing I've ever picked up on that makes this an urban fantasy. So the world building is really confusing for me. I feel like I don't know anything about the world that we're in and I'm just really confused by the curse and just basically the elements that make this an urban fantasy story. I'm not hating it. Like I'm having a pleasant experience reading it, but I don't see this being a four or five star book. Like I think this is going to be three stars, pretty middle of the road. I enjoyed my time reading it, but I'm probably not going to continue the series at this point. So it's okay. I just wanted to update you guys and let you know that I was about halfway through and yeah, I'll probably update you guys in an hour or two when I've made more progress on the book. I am trying to finish it before reading sprints tonight because I'm doing some reading sprints on Mel's channel and I am going to try and knock this one out so that I can start these Violet Delights later. And yeah, I am just, I'm just not having the best time reading it, but I'd rather just knock it out in the beginning of this readathon. That way I'm not reading something that I'm not really enjoying when I'm super tired. So I'm gonna go try and finish that now and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Hi guys, so I just finished A Curse of Dark and Lonely. It is now 7.16 p.m. and I literally just can't right now because I just hit 800 subscribers because of Mel's sprints and like she's literally the sweetest human to ever exist and I just like I can't even process anything. I'm shaking. I just finished my book and I don't even know how many hours we're into the readathon now. I need to pick another book. I'll talk to you guys after this sprints because like literally I, I cannot right now. I cannot. <laughs> on Mel's channel with Molly and Sid, but my Wi-Fi really said no red heart. So I had to leave because I felt so bad. My screen kept freezing up and I couldn't say anything and I couldn't hear anything. So, oh my gosh, that was just a lot. But the sprints were really fun while I was there. I was there for about two hours and I did get a lot of reading done. As I said before, I actually did finish A Curse So Dark and Lonely. So I do wanna talk about it really quickly. I ended up giving this book three stars. 
I did enjoy my time reading it, but I'm not going to be continuing the series for a couple reasons. I just really struggled, like I was talking about earlier in the day, to understand the world and to visually see the world. Because I love urban fantasy, but I never saw the real world aspect of this urban fantasy. It was very much just like the fantasy setting because it kind of takes place in two separate worlds. And so it just left me being really confused. I wanted to know more about the magic, not necessarily because it's a book about magic, but I wanted to know more about the curse and I wanted to know more about the world and it just left me with a lot of questions unanswered and I did not enjoy that aspect. I did like the characters. I think Harper was really strongly written. I did like Ren and I did like Grey, but I also think that the relationship that is being pursued ended up being like the wrong one. Like I was rooting for the wrong relationship. I don't want to get into that because it will be kind of spoilery, but I really did like this book. But again, it just doesn't stick out to me. I had a lot of things that I just wish were pursued that it didn't. And I think that it was good for what it was. And if you like Beauty and the Beast retellings, I think you should definitely give this one a shot. Or if you like YA fantasy in general, I think this one has a lot of potential. But for me, it just didn't have what I was specifically looking for. Now I've moved on to These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. And I've actually read about 40 pages of it. And I am really enjoying it so far. I think that the writing is beautiful, absolutely stunning, immaculate, dare I say. I think that Chloe Gong has a really poignant writing style and it's just super pretty and I'm loving reading about Juliet. She seems like such a baddie already. Only 40 pages in and I can tell that I'm going to love this book because like I said, the writing, it's there, it's solid. But also I really like the political intrigue in this book because it's about two rival gangs and it's essentially a Romeo and Juliet retelling but it's set in 1920s Shanghai with two rival gangs. And just that premise alone like sells me and I'm so excited to see more about the politics politics and the intrigue. And the book actually starts off in the prologue where there's a monster that people are killing themselves when they see it because of its like glare or something. And so I'm excited because there's also a mystery plot within this book. And I just know that this book is going to be at least four stars. I don't want to say it's going to be five stars because I don't want to get my hopes up and be disappointed. But I think that this book is going to do it for me. I think that it's going to be fantastic. So I'm going to go keep reading these Violent Delights now and I'll talk to you guys in just a little bit. Hi guys, it is now 10 p.m. which means that it is the ninth hour of the readathon and I have made some progress into my third book which is, I was about to say A Curse of Dark and Lonely but that would be a total lie, it's These Violent Delights and I am really enjoying it but here's my thing, I am really liking this book. It's taking a lot of my attention though because I feel like if I miss anything, I'm going to be confused. There's already been times where I'm having to reread pages because I just didn't pay enough attention the first time and then I'll be confused and be like, oh wait, I need to go reread that and make sure I really understand what's happening. And so this book is taking me a little bit longer than a normal book would take to read for me. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I kind of want to just let this sink in and take my time with it. But I also just don't know what else to read. And I'm worried that I'm going to be falling asleep and having to reread pages over and over and over again because I'm going to be getting tired. So it's just not a good equation. <laughs> also, because I am enjoying this book, I kind of just want to stretch it out and read it for as long as possible. So I'm just having a lot of internal conflict. Am I going to do anything about it? Probably not. I'm probably just going to continue to read these violent delights until I get tired and want to go to bed. So I don't even know why I thought I should update you guys because nothing interesting has happened besides me reading 125 pages. So I guess I'll go read 125 more and talk to you guys when I'm going to go to bed. If I go to bed. Do y'all remember when I said I was going to stay up all night? Because, um, it's not happening. I am fading so fast. I'm so tired. I ended up reading to, I believe, like, page 200 in these Violent Delights before my eyes just got so tired. I am really enjoying it, though, and I do want to continue it, but I want to continue it when I'm in a proper headspace for it and I'm not falling asleep. And then I also started an audiobook, actually, because I wanted to play Diner Dash on my DS. Yes, um... I'm not ashamed about it. So I've been playing that and listening to The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. I got like an hour and a half into the audiobook. Don't really care for it. Might not even continue it tomorrow, but I wanted to keep reading, but I didn't want to like physically read. So I just ended up picking up that because the library had it. And I'm literally too exhausted to tell you guys anything else. So we'll talk in the morning, okay? Okay. <laughs> Good morning guys. So it is now 11 a.m. which means that I have a little under two hours left in my 24-hour readathon. So 
I'm hoping that I can finish these Violent Delights, but it's probably not gonna happen. I'll probably get really, really close, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a coffee, I'm gonna get in the bath, I'm gonna read the book. Will I actually finish the book? Time will tell, but I really just wanna stay in bed and watch TikTok. My motivation is very, very gone, but I'm really gonna try and not look at my phone it's gonna be hard because I just really don't feel like reading right now, but I really wanna challenge myself. So let's see if I regret this in an hour. So after the 24 hour readathon has ended for me, so I wanted to wrap it all up for you guys. I was actually able to finish these Violent Delights. I finished it one minute before the 24 hour readathon was supposed to end. So I want to quickly talk about my feelings on this. I gave this one four stars. I did really enjoy it, but there was just a lot that I feel like could have happened and a lot of places that the plot could have gone that it just didn't. For instance, like I just felt like I got a little bit bored at some parts and this book is over 400 pages. I think that it could have been condensed down, chopped off 50 to 100 pages and it would have been the same story. I also had a lot of expectations about the romance and there just really wasn't a lot of romance for me. I know that this is going to be a series so maybe that could continue and progress in the future works but I just was a little bit disappointed by the romance because this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling and I feel like we didn't really get that much screen time between the two Romeo and Juliet characters. I did really like the intrigue of this book. I think that it had a really well-developed mystery and it kept me wanting to turn the page and I loved Juliet as a character. I think Juliet was a baddie and she was just such a great and entertaining character to read from. I laughed out loud so many times between her and Roma talking and she was just like so bad but like in a good way. <laughs> she was just so like, she knows what she wants and she's gonna go get it and she's not afraid to do what she needs to do. And I just love that about her. I think she was a really well-written character. That being said, because Juliet was so strong, I feel like we didn't get as much development from the other character, Roma. So there's just a few things that I didn't love about this book, but there was never a point in this book where I said, oh, I dislike this. I just think that there could have been improvements taken. And I also did really enjoy the writing style of this book. I think it was really beautifully written. And this is incredible for a debut novel. I'm pretty sure this is a debut novel. So amazing, four stars. I will be reading the rest of the series when it comes out, and I will definitely be picking up more works by Chloe Gong in the future. I actually started off this readathon with The Last Olympian, and like I said, I gave this one five stars, and I read, I think, like 150 pages of this book during the 24 hours, and then I also read A Curse of Dark and Lonely. All in all, I read 1,054 pages within 24 hours, which is slightly better than my last 24 hour readathon vlog, which I'm pretty happy with because I thought that for sure I was going to do worse. I actually did listen to about an hour and a half of an audiobook like I mentioned last night but I don't really remember any of it so I'm not going to count it in here and I'm probably going to just have to restart it when I want to actually listen to The Cabin in the Woods and yeah that was my really chaotic messy all over the place 24 hour readathon vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed this content and if you did don't forget to subscribe down below to my channel. I post book related content twice a week. Also go ahead and give this video a like if you liked it. It would really help support my channel. I also have my Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, Amazon wishlist, all that good stuff in the description below if you're interested in checking that out and without further ado I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!